1986, that noted socialist president, Ronald Reagan, uh, signed this bill into law. It's called the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. Congress passed it and President Reagan signed it because of increasing reports and increasing concern around the country about hospitals dumping patients. People turning up at hospitals with treatable injuries or illnesses, women turning up at the hospital in labor, but hospitals were turning away those patients rather than treating them unless people could prove that they could pay for their care or prove that they had insurance that could pay for their care. Patient dumping, they called it, and it was a growing and fatal problem in the United States, which Congress and the Reagan administration decided they were going to address in 1986. The Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act required hospitals to do two things if they received any federal funding at all uh, from taking Medicare patients or anything else. They had to do two things under this law. If somebody turns up at the hospital emergency room, the hospital must medically screen that person to see if they are, in fact, having a medical emergency. If so, then the hospital must stabilize that person and their medical emergency before discharging them or transferring them somewhere else. So in other words, if you're in the middle of giving birth, if you're in the middle of labor, the hospital can't throw you out even if you can't pay. If your heart has stopped, there's no sending your family out to the ATM or running a credit check on you before they agree to do CPR and get you stable. Hospital emergency rooms have to treat people who are having medical emergencies, no matter who they are, and regardless of whether or not those patients can pay for the care. It was a humane thing to do, that law. And it's also an expensive thing for hospitals, right? I mean, the federal government does give some help to hospitals to help them cover those costs, and the states have various ways of helping hospitals cover those costs. But in a lot of cases, the hospitals just end up eating those costs. Maybe that's fine in the long run, particularly if your hospital has a fat margin, right? If, if most of the other people who go to your hospital are paying patients, patients who have good insurance. But if that's not the case, if you're a hospital in a poor area and not many of your patients have insurance at all, and so everyone who turns up for care is A, waiting for a medical emergency to arise before they try to get care, and B, totally unable to pay for that care in any way, but you, the hospital, are obliged to provide it, eventually that's going to catch up to you and your hospital's gonna go broke. In rural Georgia, eight hospitals, eight have closed since the year 2000, and half of them have closed just in the past two years. The latest one to close was just this month, the Lower Oconee Community Hospital in the southeast part of Georgia. It's a place called Glenwood in Wheeler County, Georgia. Wheeler County, Georgia has 23% of its population without health insurance. That's like Texas level terrible. The number of kids living below the poverty line in that county is 41%. And they've just lost their hospital. So if you are in Wheeler County and you have an emergency, hope you can hold on for a 30-mile ride to the nearest medical facility because the local one is gone now. This is a really big problem for Georgia. You can't lose eight hospitals and have it not affect your state overall. The Organization of Rural Hospitals in Georgia says if Georgia doesn't figure out how to stop what's going on, how to keep its hospitals open, that state is going to create a, quote, third world nation health situation in rural parts of the state. Now, one way to fix this problem, of course, is to get the poor people who live in rural parts of that state to have health insurance. So then they could go to the doctor before things became an emergency. And when they did go to the doctor, the doctor and the hospital would be paid for the treatment. Radical idea, I know, this whole health insurance thing. The federal government has told Georgia that it'll pick up 100% of the cost of getting health insurance to 600,000 people in that state who are currently uninsured. The federal government will pay 100% of the cost of that for three years and 90% of the cost thereafter. And even though Georgia's hospitals are dropping like flies, losing the fight to stay open as they struggle to treat that state's poor rural population which doesn't have health insurance and can't pay for the treatment out of pocket. Even as that's happening and they've lost eight hospitals, Georgia Republicans have said no. They've said no to covering 600,000 more people in the state at no cost to the state. They've said no to that deal. The governor of Georgia's name is Deal. It's Nathan Deal. And now Governor Nathan Deal of Georgia has proposed a new solution to Georgia's vexing problem of all its hospitals shutting down. If the rural hospitals are shutting down because they have to treat people at the emergency room, but none of these uninsured patients can pay for that treatment, if that is the crux of the problem, well, rather than turning those uninsured patients into people who can pay, 
by giving them insurance, Governor Deal has decided, you know what, let's fix the other side of this problem. Let's fix the Ronald Reagan side of this problem. Let's repeal the requirement that hospitals have to treat people. That's his big idea. That would do it. Georgia Governor Nathan Deal has now proposed this. He's turning down the option that would get 600,000 more people in his state to have health insurance. He's turning that down and instead is proposing that the solution to Georgia's problems is for the federal government to repeal the Reagan era law that says if you turn up at the hospital while you're in labor or while you're having a heart attack, that hospital has to treat you. That's a federal law. He's asking federal officials to move to repeal it because that would be good for Georgia. The governor said revisiting that specific law is what Congress should do, quote, if they really want to get serious about lowering the cost of health care in this country. When the paper uh, in Noonan, Georgia, it's a paper called the Noonan Times Herald, uh, when they published Governor Deal's proposal on that issue this week, when they said that what the governor wants to do is get rid of the rule that says emergency rooms have to treat sick, sick people, the first comment on that article was this. Why, yes, that is a way to cut medical spending. Let the poor die. And on a purely mathematical basis, that is right. And the governor's right. If you turn women in labor and people having heart attacks away at the hospital door, hospital costs will go down. The logic is inarguable. And that inarguable logic is now the Re Georgia Republican plan for health care in that state as they lose hospital after hospital after hospital after hospital. Their new plan is that emergency rooms should turn people away. And you know what? That plan will totally work if we can all just agree from here on out. And we all have to agree that nobody in Georgia from here on out is allowed to have a heart attack or break a leg or need to ever deliver a baby as long as you're in Georgia unless you can pay out of pocket for the costs. And good people of Georgia, if you keep up that end of the bargain, then boy, does Governor Nathan Deal have a deal for you. Deal versus Reagan. That does it for us tonight. Thanks for being with us tonight. We've, as I said, got more on our exclusive from the Rio Grande Valley in Texas coming up early next week on the show. We will see you again on Monday. In the meantime, though, rest up. You've got an important stint to do in prison. <laughs>